Studio check. Frequencies check. We are live on air. You are listening to the In Fact Blessing the Airway. Take the journey into the world of sports, news, entertainment, while embracing the hottest beats on the planet. Come on, Joe. Rocking the mind, body, and soul. Energy, electricity, and a splash of controversy. Now, without further ado, it's our pleasure to bring to you the biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The SBTV Nation. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you. Happy weekend. We are here. It is a full slate of college football. We're right smack in the middle of the MLB playoffs, and I've got both my guys on the line. First of all, I'm going to welcome back my man, Dr. Dan. What's going on, my man? Oh, man, you know, a um, little, little tough blow with that Mets game, but when you're, uh, like I said, man, when you're when you got Jesus Christ on the mound against oh. you, just nothing you can do. Talking about Madison Bumgarner, who was Madison is, Jesus Christ Bumgarner, right? <laughs> who pits very damn well versus the New York Mets. I mean, dude, road ERA in the playoffs and World Series of point five, on five point five. His the, whip over his last nine starts in the playoffs point six seven four. Unbelievable. Okay? So look, I the Mets. I knew they had to outlast him. I mean, Syndergaard was almost just as good. Um. Just couldn't get it done. But, hey, look, it is what it is. Um, coming into these series, there was a lot of stuff that was kind of crazy. Um, and I know some people are real salty up here in New England right now. Oh, absolutely. And do I have the dream on the other line as well? I am here. It stinks because I did this whole big talk. You apparently couldn't hear me on the opener. I'm screaming and yelling and going crazy with the opener. <laughs> I thought we lost him. <laughs> I'm like, is this guy here or not? But, hey, whatever. I took it over, Dream. Oh, good morning. What's going on? <laughs> David Price, SB TV Nation. Your boys is in the house. Price is booty. <laughs> About to string him up in Boston. <laughs> and uh, you know, nobody heard none of that. Uh, Dan, talk to me about David Price in a big game. Wow. Uh, big game, little game, whatever. Dude will be, you know, good thing he can pay for his own golf course. Unbelievable um, how David Price I, laid an egg I mean, yesterday. he's garbage. He's a, he's a mess. And, you know, I want to talk about something else, too, real quick. On, on all these pitchers. So you're talking about three pitchers that went yesterday. Yep. All right. Price, uh, Scherzer, Kershaw, right? Yep. Those dudes combined get over half a billion dollars. Wow. And you got Price going out there stinking up the joint. You got Kershaw again. Look, he got lucky to get out of there with a win. I mean, look, I'm not saying he was bad, but he was mediocre, and you're paying some guy $200 million not to be mediocre in the playoffs. Right. And Scherzer stunk. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's it's hilarious, I mean, that these guys are commanding, and maybe it'll be a rethinking in baseball that, hey, maybe we shouldn't give some guy a quarter million dollars unless he's good in the playoffs because, look, it's going to catch up to him. I mean, it's going to catch up to him. And, you know, I know you kind of like the Dodgers. I still think that there's flaws. There is flaws there. But, you know, I think that what they should do is you can get that much money, but it's got to be built in as far as incentives are concerned. Can't do it. Players Union will never allow it. Really? MLB Players Union is the strongest union that sucks. probably in the world. That sucks. I mean, you can have incentives. So, like, for instance, you can have incentives. You say, oh, Clayton Kershaw, every time you win a playoff game, it's a million dollars, right? There you go. Yep. What? I mean, <laughs> what's a million dollars? Yeah. <laughs> He's got 250 mil in the bank. I mean, I don't think it's any added incentive. I'm sure he wants to win. I don't think it's a thing of being incentivized. It's it's just don't suck in the playoffs. Um, that being said, I know everybody thinks I'm like a Rich Hill apologist. He's he's getting destroyed tonight. You really this think so? Huh? About the Nationals. I think the oh. Nationals are going to get up on Rich Hill, huh? Nationals are going to are going to. And here's the thing: I am even taking a prop bet. Uh, once I see it, I know it's going to come out. Harper's going to hit a bomb in this game. Harper's going to hit a bomb. Look, the Nationals don't have a ton of experience off Rich Hill, but in the at bats they do, they're hitting like five oh nine off him. 
Okay. okay. Um, there's there's guys that are hitting a thousand off Rich Hill, and I know like three, four, five at bats. You want to say it's nothing? It's not really nothing. I mean, you've seen the guy before. Yep. In his only playoff start, which was 2007, I don't think he lasted more than three or four innings, and he had a nine ERA. Got it. So. That being said, I'm I'm all over the Nationals. Look, this is obviously a must win for them. It's sure a is. must must win. Um, you know, the pitcher, you know, Roark is is really really good. I know it's a big game for him, but I I really think the bats get it done today. Okay. All right, and looking at the updated future odds right now for the MLB, the Cubs are obviously the odds-on favorite to win the World Series, plus 205. you got the Blue Jays, plus 345. you got the Cleveland Indians, plus 375, which I think is crazy. What's uh, the Nationals-Indians World Series matchup? Do you see that? Nationals-Indians is plus 1,900. Oh, I got to ride it. You got to ride Really? You like, the, you like the Cleveland Indians, huh? It's Hey, look, it's about who's hot. Okay. It's about who's hot. And everybody, everybody, I mean, look, from old people to young people to black people to white people, everybody's like, Red Sox are killing the Indians. I, I was part of it. The only reason I didn't take it was at minus 150. I just felt it was a little high. Um, and now you got the Indians coming in and on the verge of knocking them off, which, I mean, look, they could come back. I don't see it. And then, what, Toronto? Toronto has a lot of flaws, too. Yeah, okay. Bullpen, you know, bullpen. and then the Nationals, like I said, I think they win today. Um, and it's going to be a hard-fought series. But then again, the Cubs, something about those bats, they just look a little dead. They do. And they you know what? They they could have. I mean, at the end of the game, when Araldis Chapman, I believe, whoever the first batter was, who had a full count, and they called a strikeout when he clearly did not swing, that, w- that could have been the tying run. Because I believe it was Posey that hit the the double, so it would have been a tie game, and you know could have went into extra innings and all that. But, yeah, Giants hey. Giants can't save it for the ninth inning every night. You know? Oh, exactly. Dream. What's your thoughts on uh, Major League Baseball? My thoughts are the hunt for Red October being the San Francisco Giants <laughs> and watching out for them. <laughs> Watch out for the Giants. Yeah. They still they think. know how to play in October. So I, I mean, just just to take that point on, I've actually so I had that open parlay for anybody that followed that i had the cubs money line which obviously we're biting our nails with an open spot and i've actually put it on the cubs again okay i actually think today is, is today is is a day where i'm also going to be run lining the cubs as well interesting I, I think it's on with the cubs today too as well i think they wanted to show everybody that they could that they could win a pitching duel yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i mean you got a guy in in hendrix that is 16 and 8 with a 213 and Samarja, I don't know why everybody, all these analysts seem to love him. I mean, he was 12 and 11 with a 381. That's like the height of mediocrity, you know? Sure. I mean, it's not great. It's not terrible. But, like, the Cubs are going to expose him today. Um, you know, I think they get a big win. All right. Yeah. And and uh, the, the biggest surprise here is uh, the Texas Rangers, who have, if they were to emerge, would have had home field. Or, yeah, throughout the, the playoffs and the World Series, but they're down 0 to 2, and now they got to go to the Rogers Center, Dan. They're done. You think so, huh? Stick a fork in it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's over tomorrow. So it's the Boston it's... Red Sox have a way better shot coming back from 0 2. For sure. Than the Texas sure. Rangers. Because, uh, I mean, you're talking about um, Boston's going to Boston. Right. I mean, Texas is going now to Toronto. Oof. You know, you got Sanchez, who. Very underrated. I mean, and the team scores behind him. 15 and 2 with a 3 ERA. And Colby Lewis, man. I mean, 6 and 5 with a 3 7 1. I, you know, I don't have any love for Colby Lewis. I think that four or five runs score wins this game. Uh, so I'll probably be on the over depending on what it is. But I think Toronto sweeps. Sweeps today. Oh, wow. Yep. Are they playing today? Or tomorrow? No, it's tomorrow. Oh, okay, fantastic. Sunday, right. 7 30. Sunday, 7 30. Let's keep it moving and go from there. Guys, huge, huge, huge college football slate today. Now let's talk about baseball. Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah, on, keep going. Hey, it's hey, incredible. it is the playoff stream. Just saying. So, you know what? Uh, well, well, let's 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 get involved in it here because I am, guys, I'm absolutely in love with the card today. Wow. Yes. Absolutely in love with the college football card. Now, there was one game that I was feeling, and it has been postponed, and that is LSU at Florida, number 18 Florida. 
And there's no makeup date yet announced, but that game will not happen due to the hurricane that has uh, brought its way to Florida land. So you guys realize that the in I believe it was Daytona Beach, they had sharks swimming on the street. <laughs> That's crazy. That's, Can you imagine? I don't that? mean to laugh. And no, I still, imagine. Imagine like just being, you know just... being on you know being on the second floor of your home or something like that, and just I, you, I mean there? you should you should evacuate. But uh, a shark swimming by, oh man. Crazy. Hey, where was Tara Reid, you know? All right. So, anyway, we're going to get right into this card, guys. And uh, oh, No Sharknado reference? Oh, come on, guys. Sharknado, exactly. <laughs> uh, how many of those? There's like five of those now, right? I yeah. think they're almost on seven, you know? <laughs> Shark, I don't know. But, uh... Sharknado. <laughs> Wow. Craziness. Unbelievable. So that that's one of the craziest movies out there, man. So, all right, guys. So let's get into the college football slate and have a conversation. Um, we're going to kick it around the, the table here. And I'm going to start off with you, Dan. Since you haven't been on the show in a week, I'd like to know what your first game is on a ticket as far as this card's concerned. So I know, and I'm just going to start with it because it's the earliest game on my card. Yep. I know that this is drawing interest everywhere, and I'm I'm perplexed. I am all over Texas plus thirteen and a half. Texas plus thirteen and a half going into Oklahoma. Well, it's, under, a, it's over. a neutral. It's a neutral oh, is it? Game. It's oh, okay. Oh, okay, so, Dallas, Texas, got it. Yep. yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Free world, right? So, I yeah I, I mean, look, I thought that you know, look, we all know Texas has no defense. That's okay. Oklahoma doesn't really have one either. Um, I think this game is close throughout, real close throughout. Interesting. My my son, I was talking to him last night. He thinks Texas is going to win outright. Dream, what's your thoughts on Texas and Charlie Strong? My thoughts are to leave this game absolutely, <laughs> absolutely alone. If you cannot, this Texas team, you know, you count on this Texas team, they will punch it in the face every time it seems like. Yeah, but this is the game they get up for. Well, I mean, okay. <laughs> You, that could be true. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that that's not going to happen. I'm just saying I wouldn't be involved in it because you're just so unpredictable. You know, I thought that they would show up last week. There was times during that game that they did show up, and then there's times during this game that they got lost. The offense has no rhythm, no consistency. The defense, like you said, is non-existent. You know, I just. I don't know what to do with this team. They don't know what they want to do with their quarterback situation. They're all over the place with that. Coach Strong's job's on the line. That's now a new oh, yeah. as well. It's just too much distractions. And then Oklahoma finally looked like they maybe have decided to, to, to live up to a little bit to what they were supposed to do this season. They showed up last week, beat TCU, which was a little bit surprising to me. Had they gotten their swagger back and are they ready to make their move? I, you know, there's a lot of uncertainties with this game. I would I would assume that the third taking the thirteen points in the dog to me, if you're gonna gamble, seems like the way to do because it looks like a field goal game if you ask me. It looks like it's gonna be probably a pretty close game just because you don't know what either one of these teams are gonna do. But um, you know, it's just too many uncertainties for me to like this game at all. Got it. Well, Texas scores about forty one points a game, guys. So they can definitely put up points, and I'm sure they'll put up points on Oklahoma's defense. So the thirteen and a half Dan might be a pretty good play. Texas scores forty one, but Oklahoma scores thirty nine. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Now, when these two teams have played each other, guys, it's been tight the last two Always years. It, Texas won the game 24-17 to 17 back October of last year, and the year before that, Oklahoma only won by five. So it saved Mr. Uh, Mr. Strong's job. Yeah, good point. For sure. Absolutely. They know, they know that this game means everything to the people at their, at their university and everything. You know, they, they beat them. They get all the accolades. It doesn't, you know, obviously they want to win national championships, but, you know, this is, this is a, I think a, Almost bigger game for Texas because I think if they lose this game and they get blown out, they lose by more than two touchdowns. I think that Charlie Strong might be, I mean, definitely. I would say definitely gone. Gone by Monday? I don't think by Monday. I think they might let him finish out the year, but. Okay. I mean, well, it could be a you little. Can't, uh... You can't be the high because they're going to have to pay him anyway. Yeah. So you might as well let him finish out the year instead of paying another coach. Well, hey, look what happened to Les Miles. Go on. Couple yeah, games but in. It, it's. Which I thought was kind of crazy to right. dismiss him like that in the middle of the year. All right. So I'm going to kick this over to the Dream. Dream, what do you got up your sleeve early? Well, you know, I don't really uh, – you guys talk about liking this card. And you know what? I, where did that term card come from, by the way? The card. <laughs> Who's got a card? Because I don't have one. <laughs> you got a card over there? Get the card. Anyway. Get somebody a card, player. Come on. 
You guys um, like the like the lineup today. I don't really like today's matchups. I think it's a very, very, um, you know, a very tricky spot today. A couple of teams, I just don't know how they're going to respond based on what went down and how they played last week. One of the games that I'm looking at, I'm not in love with, though. I am looking at Michigan State very vaguely to Ooh. bounce back against BYU. And it's not necessarily about Michigan State. More, than, uh, It's about BYU. I just think that Michigan State, you know, at home, coming off the loss, tighten up their act a little bit, maybe get it together and have some success today against BYU. I think Michigan State will win. It's a relatively lower line. Uh, it's only four and a half. Obviously, you got to manipulate it because you know that's what I do. I think that Michigan State, though, I, uh, as a team, will be able to have some things work successfully for them on the offensive side. Probably not really be afraid of what BYU will do um, on their offensive side. The defense should be straight for Michigan State. I think they win this game. Really, Dream? I'm yes. with you there. Okay, I'm looking at it here. I mean, that line, I saw sixes yeah. earlier in the week. That was down, down to four, to four and, and a half. half. Why is the line movement, Dream? Line movement. Line, line movement. With the card. <laughs> <laughs> line <laughs> movement on the card, brother. Line movement happened on it The now. Mormons out there got a lot of money. You know? Better watch the Sharps. They're, Sharp. they're, you know, the Mormons be gambling online, so no one can see what they're doing. Sharps are on BYU, Dream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. All right. So, by the way, guys, beware. the term card came from back in the day when they when the runners used to come door to door, you know, in the yeah. hood with the card. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, the I'm looking at a couple of games here, guys, and I'm going to go over to the top 25, and I'm going to talk about the 3 o'clocker, where you got number 6 Houston, who are 5-0. and Going against the Navy midshipmen in Navy. Houston minus 17 with an under over of 51 points. And I can tell you this much that I'm all about Houston today. And I'm going to tell you why. Navy, the midshipmen, you know the triple option is a heavily run-based system. Okay? You know what Houston does versus the runs, guys. If you don't know, they only allow 42 yards on the ground per game. That's it. Dream, does that make them the top team rush defense in college football? Very close. Very. I believe that they are. I mean, they're very close. If they're not, that is a, I mean, that is an impressive, impressive stat. And I talked about this team and their defense and how their defense gets it done. But I do. I think you might be right. That may be the top defense in college football versus the run. All right. Exactly. I so it, I believe it is. But that that's it's a traditional run game that they're defending. That's right. the only concern. Right. Exactly. Are you are you manipulating this? I'm probably not even going to manipulate it. To be honest with you, okay. just because I've seen Navy play. Navy's a good team, and they are three and one. Granted, but. I just think that Houston is just going to – I think they're going to be – I don't think Navy's going to be able to score much at all in this game. So I think Houston will, you know, maybe cover like a, uh, something along the lines of a 37 to 10 or, uh, you know, 34 to 7, something along those lines. I think Houston covers the spread and gets it done. I just can't see Navy having any success with the triple option versus Houston, especially with that rush defense. It's been amazing. I mean, who did they play? Um, they played – a couple of weeks ago on primetime, this was Houston. They played at Cincinnati. Dream, you remember Cincinnati couldn't run. I don't even think they had a rushing yard until like the third quarter. Right. So I like this game. I think I'm going to get down with Houston. I'm probably going to take them flat and then also put them in a teaser with some other teams. But I'm feeling Houston today. And I got to be honest with you, that that dynamic of the read option with Greg Ward Jr. has been absolutely outstanding. It almost fools the cameraman at times. That's how good they are with it. So yeah, I know that, that does a lot when you're watching the game. Like, Why do you just go over there? <laughs> I love when they so, try and correct it real quick and they're making everybody nauseous, like trying to. Oh, and and, and then and then on top of it, the the worst part about it is you've got you've got the read option with Greg Ward Jr. and his backs, and then you have Navy with the triple option. With, with, and the cameraman gets fooled there, too. So this this game, <laughs> you're going to probably need something in your stomach before you uh, watch this game. A little bit of to <laughs> cure the motion sickness. Yeah. So, all right, Dan, I'm going to kick it over to you. What do you got next? Um, Let's see. So there's, let's go early. We're just at 3.30. I have a couple 3.30s. Let's see. We did Michigan. A couple 3.30s. You know what? I do have a 12.30, actually, that we didn't talk about. What do you got? The Pittsburgh Panthers. Pittsburgh Panthers, huh? At home against Georgia Tech, minus six and a half. Okay. Um, I, I don't know what everybody's still seeing as Georgia Tech team. I think, you know, look, Pittsburgh will defend that triple option. They do it all the time. 
Um, I don't think that's anything that they're, you know, really too worried about. And again, I'm looking at Georgia Tech. I'm looking at who they beat, you know, Vanderbilt, which, okay, great. Mercer Madness and at BC <laughs> by three. Yep. Um, I think going into Pittsburgh today, I think Pittsburgh beats them by a touchdown or more, obviously. But yeah, minus six and a half. That might not be a bad play. Dream, you got any thoughts on that game? I don't. I happen to agree with him, though. So I don't. It's not one that I'm looking at, but I would agree with him. You know, at, at first look, I do think Pittsburgh's going to be successful against Georgia Tech. I agree. I don't know what the love affair with Georgia Tech is either. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. So I'm going to kick it over to you, Dream. What do you got next? Well, as far as I'm concerned, dude, I mean, it, it, Michigan State's all I'm really looking at today as far as financially. Okay. Uh, as far as taking a couple of looks and maybe getting involved with some live stuff, uh, which is what I, I'm probably going to do. I'm very interested in this Michigan State, excuse me, not Michigan State, Mississippi State-Auburn game. Okay. Uh, Auburn comes into Mississippi State today. I think this Mississippi State team... This is an interesting game for Auburn. I haven't liked what I've seen out of Auburn as far as their offense executing this season. You know, a couple of tight spots. They were able to pull a couple of tight games out. But I like Mississippi State today in this particular matchup. I think they're at home. Uh, got a little bit of their swagger back, just a little bit. You know, they, they did play UMass last week, so I know we can't take too much from that. Um, the loss against LSU, you know, LSU just barely gutted that game out and got them by three points. Interesting game today for them. I think they'll be able to have some success against Auburn. You know, when we talk about Mississippi State, you know, you're talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, Dylan Fitzgerald and 605 yards through the air, five touchdowns. One interception, so he doesn't turn the ball over a lot. Doesn't intercept. Doesn't you know throw a lot of interceptions. The run game is pretty positive. Three hundred and twenty nine yards on the game on the on the ground. I think that he'll have some sex success against Auburn's defense because Auburn is allowing one hundred and fifty six yards on the ground. Kind of like Mississippi State, but it'll probably be a live play for me if I get involved in it. That those numbers seem like one of Action Jackson's games. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many have you played so far? Four. Exactly. No doubt. Definitely. Right? <laughs> All right. So, uh, hey, I wish you the best of luck with that one. I am not going to. St- I'm going to stay away from that one. Just you know, these, these SEC teams kind of it, it, they can go either way at times. You know what I mean? Ooh. So I'm going to fall back from that. I was hoping that Florida and LSU was going to play today, but we'll see when that game gets made up. I'm going to shoot over, guys, to – and speaking of the SEC, I'm actually going to talk about this game. I don't know if I'm going to play it, but there's a couple of uh, key ingredients here to Tennessee coming into Texas A&M. A lot of people are high on Texas A&M. I don't necessarily know if I'm one of them. Um, I can tell you this much, that Tennessee has been flirting with danger every single time we're playing. I'm almost contemplating on taking a Texas A&M first half considering the fact of what Tennessee's been doing. Now, I do think that Texas A&M is giving a lot of points here. I think the minus seven might be a little heavy. Uh, Dan, what's your thoughts on that? I've already got it locked in, A&M minus seven. You, you're giving the seven? Yeah, the um, the volunteers are phonies. Okay. Absolute, 100%. I mean, you're, you're beating. Okay, good win at Georgia. Georgia's not that good. Florida, we see what their offense really is. Yep. Um, and then Ohio, Virginia Tech, and Appalachian State does nothing for me. We're talking about an A&M team that I think they beat and beat down a good Arkansas team at home. Okay. Um, I, I think Tennessee goes in there today, and, and they get down big in the first half, and they don't come back today. So would you be inclined to do a first half as well? What is what is the first half number? Uh, you're probably looking at three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I normally don't do halves just because it's not my, my style. Okay. Um, but I definitely, I mean, look, I think, yeah, I think three and a half is a good number. Yeah, Tennessee. I mean, listen, five and zero. Oh, you still got to pay attention to them. And you do, you do, but they, I just still think they're very, very overrated. They should have lost to Georgia last week. They should have. They should have. I mean, a double Hail Mary. I, I don't think I've ever seen that in football. Dream, what's your thoughts on Tennessee? Because I know that you are not a believer in this team. Not a believer in them at all. What bothers me is Texas A&M last week with South Carolina really struggled. South Carolina is not a good team. No. And I just don't understand what that was all about. I mean, when I saw this game, 
I look, sandwich in between Arkansas and Tennessee is what that was about. I, and, and you may be right there, but you know, I saw I saw this Texas A&M Tennessee game last week, and saying to myself, "Man, Texas A&M, I'm figuring this is where Tennessee falls." Then I watched Texas A&M struggle with South Carolina, and I'm like. Why are they struggling with South Carolina? I, I just still have no answer for that. And that's the only thing that bothers me. Other than that, I agree with Dan. I agree Texas A&M beats Tennessee and, and, and it falls out this week. The other thing we got to remember, and I I hate talking about it because I don't really gamble based on these principles, but everybody and their mother is taking Texas A&M today. <laughs> that's I, true. That I mean, you know that based on, you know, a lot of people – don't think Tennessee's as good as they are because I started at the beginning of the season. I'm one of them as well. The, the the bailout win last week, and everybody's thinking the bridge is over today. And, you know, it's not one of the principles and philosophies that I like to follow, but there are going to be a lot of Texas A&M backers today to beat this, this Tennessee team. If that's something that scares you off, I don't know. This game just got me a, a, a slight bit puzzled and uh, scratching my head. But I, I think Texas A&M wins the game as well. All right. All right, so since I didn't really have much of a side on that one, I'm just going to keep it with myself and talk about the Northern Illinois Huskies going into Western Michigan. Oh, you the Broncos. A good one there. The Broncos <laughs> are five and zero. Oh, Dan, thanks to card. That's 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 my that's my key spot of the card today, Dream. Well, how do you watch that game? You got to put up antennas and like <laughs> something str- like that. You got streaming online, player. That's what you do. All right, so Western Michigan, the line is going down to 17 points. Uh, I really like this team. I think this team is going to wipe the floor with Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois is one in four, guys. They have been absolutely brutal this year. And I just think that, I mean, Western Michigan, that's, this is my team to go to not only, not only win out, but go to a pretty impressive bowl game and knock off a team in a superior conference. I really think that this team is good. So I'm going to stick with that, and I'm going to lay the 17. And I'm also going to probably parlay that, or I'm going to tease it probably with the Houston Cougars and get those down somewhere under the 10 points. I think putting those two together will be pretty good for me. Seven and a half point tease? Yeah, something along those lines. I think that's what I'm going to do. So, all right. So... This card is sponsored by Charmin Toilet Paper. <laughs> <laughs> by Pepto Bismol. Exactly. So, uh, Dream, what else are you looking at here? I know that you're not really feeling too much on the card. I'm not. I'm not. Um, as far as today is concerned, I am not feeling a lot. I'm getting more uh, excited about tomorrow. What will be an interesting matchup, though? Washington goes into Oregon today. It's a late game. It's a 7 o'clock or 7.30 game. I know, Dr. Dan, you might be. I don't know if you're looking at this or not, but we do have... Um, Washington coming off of uh, last week's performance, going into this Oregon team that I think is very overrated, and I think you think the Oregon's overrated too. Washington beat the brakes off of Stanford. I like Washington to beat Oregon and beat them up. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. And I looked at this game, you know, a lot. Minus nine and a half right now, I think, is where we're currently at. And, I mean, Oregon on a three-game losing streak. Yeah. That's the thing that kind of scares you is, I mean, they lost that game at Nebraska by a field goal. They got beat by a good Colorado team. And then Washington State, you know, literally just, I mean, murdered them. And you would think that Washington does the same thing. I think they win the game. I'm a little worried about nine and a half or ten points. Yeah, that seems like a lot of points, doesn't it? Just... I just could see, you know, Washington being up, you know, two touchdowns pretty much the whole game, and then you know, Oregon coming down the field and scoring late, you and know then the, it blows your whole thing. I know you're not taking points, but no, you're definitely not. Taking, <laughs> but when you look at Oregon, you look at what they allow as far as offense is concerned: 490 yards, 280 yards allowed through the air, and then 210 on the ground. Mm-hmm. I mean. You know, if you are Miles Gaskin, you were foaming at the mouth right now to get the ball handed off to you because he's got 82 carries, 402 yards. He's about to go ham on this Oregon defense. I think Washington actually goes in, and it could get rather ugly. Of course, I'm not going to lay the points because I just never do, but this may get rather ugly. And this game, while it may not be getting attention right now, People will be looking at around 8 o'clock tonight when their car is all <laughs> with a couple of surprises in uh, there. Oh, especially if you sprinkle in some baseball. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching Huskies this evening. All right, all right, all right. So I'm going to move over, guys, to the ACC, <laughs> where I'm looking at Florida State. This is 8 o'clock going into the U of Miami. 
Uh, Miami is 4-0, and and they are given three points to Florida State. Looking at Miami, I, Dan, I know that you've already said they haven't played anybody, but I think the U is going to get up for this game, and i got to be honest with you. If the U gets by this game today, they got a nice-looking schedule moving forward to possibly get into an ACC championship game versus Clemson, most likely, and or, or Louisville, one or the other. But it'll probably be Clemson. What's your thoughts here, Dan? I'm taking the U. Um, they about to get smushed at home. They're going to get smushed at home, huh? I mean, Even with that you're defense. Ta- you're talking about a team. I understand that Florida State got absolutely destroyed at Louisville, which, you know, hey, I, I thought that was going to happen. I mean, not that crazy. But, and then, you know, look, I understand they had a bad loss at home to North Carolina. But when I say Miami hasn't played anybody, they haven't played anybody. Home against A&M in Atlantic. Come on. Okay? <laughs> and even that Atlantic game was kind of close. I mean, they won by four touchdowns, but it's Florida Atlantic. You know, at App State, and I don't care what anybody says about Appalachian State. That just shows how bad Tennessee really is. Okay. And they barely, you know, barely got by um, on the road against Georgia Tech. And now Florida State is far superior. This is like... This is like that game, Dream. You remember when uh, when everybody was all about South Florida? We were just like, nope. okay, it's yeah. Florida State. Like, it's Florida State. Like, <laughs> they are about to show Miami that they are still the team. And there's nothing more. I know you're saying Miami's going to get up for this. So is FSU, man. They want to take my. They want to take it to Miami. They don't want to be, you know, the reason Miami's in the playoffs. And they're going to beat them down here today. You really think so, huh? I re- I'm very confident. All right, well. Plus two and a half, too? I mean, come on. I'll take the plus two and a half all day. (laughs) His five-star play on Miami, you just wrecked it. (laughs) I don't know. You know what? Hey, listen. Miami has, like, about five times the revenge here going on, considering the fact that Florida State's beating them five times in a row. I know, but there's a reason why coming into the year, no one was really talking about this Miami team. Right, and the other thing, five times their revenge, you know my ass. By the way, Florida State is going to lose this game right now. They are up. They, Florida State's back is against the wall. They're struggling right now. Mm-hmm. They need to go out and execute. They're taking this game as serious as Miami is. The, listen, Jimbo, he's going to have the boys ready. They're going to Florida State will be ready to play this game. And I, I happen to agree with Dan. I think Florida State wins the game. All too. right, well, I'm against both of you guys. I'm going with the U. Dream, there's a reason why they're favored. Just saying. We talked about that time and time again, right? You do talk about that time and time again. All right. So there's a reason why the U is favored, and I am going to go against you guys, and I'm taking the Miami Hurricanes (laughs) today. And I'm going to lay it at two and a half. I'm going to get it down to two and a half. That's what I'm going to do. So, Dan, what else you got? Um, I got to go all the way back to, uh, I think, what is it? One, three, thirty. Three thirty. North Carolina. I know we had a bunch of people asking about this game, right? Um, North Carolina is now a one and a half point dog at home against Virginia Tech. Wow. I fail to understand what is going on here. I've looked all over. I Again, you have North Carolina coming off a big win at Florida State. They're still definitely alive for the ACC Coastal. Virginia Tech is not going to stand in their way at home. Give, I mean, give me that plus one and a half all day and Tar Heels roll. You really think so? I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm, again, very, very confident. I mean, that was a big win for them last week. I mean, huge, huge win. And I mean, four and one, North Carolina is still very much alive in everything. Got it. Well, you know what? Hey, that's a clear indication that this show does not pay attention to any kind of line movements whatsoever. No. no. And, you know, you look at it, the only the only problem is Elijah Hood for North Carolina is possibly, well, he's, he's probable here. Probable. Okay. All right. So, hey, Dan, I wish you the best of luck with that one. I think that I was... think their quarterback gets better with every game, too. Okay. And, I mean, Va Tech, I just, again, another team that's year in, year out overrated. Got it. Okay. You no, know this game. Funny spot. It's a funny spot, and I, I, I happen to think that North Carolina will get through a very nasty game. Dan, prepare for Maylox and, and Pepto and all that because there's just something really funny looking about this game. You know, you look at it and it all points to North Carolina winning. And yeah, everything you said, I agree with. But 
it's like one of those too easy type situations. You know what I mean? And while I do think North Carolina will win the game, North Carolina gives up a lot of offense. 458 yards. They're not really playing a lot of defense, this North Carolina team. 236 on the ground, 222 through the air. So Virginia Tech is going to be around in this game. Definitely going to be around. You're going to find some things that are going to work and going to have some success. You got a real stomach ache on your on your hands, but I think at the end of the day, I do think North Carolina will be able to manage to pull this game out. I'm just not sure how. I actually don't dis I don't disagree with you. I think this game is very very tight through three quarters. Yep. And I just think that North Carolina finds a way to to pull away. All okay. right. Sounds good. Going back to the SEC guys, Alabama is a 14 point favorite at Arkansas today. Seems like a very very interesting game dream. And I don't know if Alabama can cover that 14 points in Arkansas. Arkansas is not bad this year. What's your thoughts? You know what, man? Bama and covering the spread. Bama's got about as much interest in the covering the spread as I have in laying one. <laughs> All right? We both just don't care and don't want to do it. All yeah. right? And that's just where Bama is as far as that's concerned. Interesting matchup as far as, you know, the SEC is concerned. But you know, you know in your heart of hearts. Bama is not losing to Arkansas. I'm they're just, not going to lose. Not going down. You no, know, so you're asking yourself whether they're going to cover the spread or not. And that's, you know, don't even bother with that. Get rid of it. Manipulate it. That's why we have today's gambling. And that's why, I mean, don't play this game straight. I mean, stupid. Because like I just said, Bama doesn't care about, could, could they cover the spread? Definitely. Will they cover the spread? Who knows? Is it important to them? Really not. You know, but when you look at this game, you know that Bama's going to win. You know, they played, Bama last week played around with Kentucky. All right, didn't cover their spread with Kentucky. And by the way, that game was kind of nasty up until like the third quarter for a minute. Again, Bama will do their usual bore you to death, put you to sleep offense, wait for you to make a mistake and then capitalize on your mistake and then move forward from there. I don't know if I've seen a lot of much, you know, maturity yet or the next step for um, Jalen Hurts as far as at the quarterback helm. I just haven't really liked his. I you you said you've been impressed with him this season. Huh? I haven't really been impressed with him, and I haven't seen him, you know, improve from week to week, so to say. So you know, I, you know, I don't know what you make of that. I do. I do know Arkansas does have that rabbit factor of they're one of the luckier teams in college football. I don't know if that's going to come into effect today with them. Well, would, you you know when the last time Arkansas beat Alabama anywhere was right. Uh, looking at 10 it 10 years ago, 10 years ago, exactly. in overtime by a point. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm with you on the win. Now the last two years, it's been very close. Right. Remember it was 27, 14 last year. And I could see that happening. And for all you people that are going to take two, two touchdowns, uh -huh. God bless you. Yep. But remember the year before 14, 13 Alabama, but in this decade, Alabama six and zero, and they outscore them by 24 and a half points. Now there were two wins that were 52 to nothing in 2012 and 2013 right. so um i don't know man i i actually think that Al i'm not gonna play it just because you're right 14 points but i something's telling me that alabama kills them today well what should be telling you is th that arkansas allows 163 yards on the ground yeah <laughs> harris should go ham on arkansas i think that alabama will be able to run the ball on arkansas's defense and that if you if if art if bama can run then it will become a mess because they'll control the clock, they'll control the ball, they'll control all the momentum, they'll put Arkansas's offense to sleep, and we look at this game at the end of the game, you know, it'll be ugly. Um, yeah, but it, Dream, you know what'll happen there, right? It's like they'll be running the ball the whole game, they'll be up 20, and then Arkansas will score a meaningless of touchdown. Course. Win to by be 13. up 13, and then they'll run the clock out on the run game. It's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and Harris is probable, but he does. he is a little bagged up with an ankle injury. Okay. So something to take a look at as well, guys, moving forward. I just think that's a lot of points. I do, too. I, yeah. I, for, for some reason. I mean, I'm looking at it, and I'm like kind of almost scratching my head with that one. So anyway, guys, moving on. I'm going to move over to – I got a couple of games here. One in the Pac-12. Mm. We got Colorado going into USC. And USC is minus 5.5 with an under-over of 64 points. This line has kind of climbed a little bit. And I got to be honest with you, I think this Colorado Buffaloes team is not that bad. The only loss they have was the one in Ann Arbor where they lost in the big house in Michigan. And they were <laughs> giving Michigan all they could handle in Michigan. So 
I don't know. I mean, USC does not dazzle you offensively at all. They only average 25.8 points a game. This is a pretty good spot for Colorado. I think Colorado can make it work today. Dan, what's your thoughts on this? I really like Colorado. You like Colorado? Um, okay. Yeah, and I, you know, I've been, I've been kind of looking at this Colorado team for like a couple years because I have, you know, a lot of family actually out there, and like they're part of the university system, and they were saying, you know, all that they were saying is this team needs to mature, right? And and even I think it was the coach of USC a couple years ago said, you know, in a couple of years when these guys mature, watch out because they're going to be really good, and they are really good. I yeah. mean. They really hung, hung tough with uh, with Michigan yeah. in that game. I have a feeling this is one of those that, you know, a lot of people are looking, oh, it's USC versus Colorado. And But when you deep dive into this game and this Colorado team, they're very talented. I love them at plus five and a half. I'm all over it. What do you think, Dream? Any thoughts? No, I got no thoughts on this No one. thoughts. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, they definitely have some incentive here. I mean, they've I lost. This mess up. This one ain't messing up my card. He's the one who's about you put it head teaser, and you got to watch the whole thing because you're like, damn, everybody's winning but them. Yeah, right, right. Well, you know what? They've lost the last seven years in a row to USC. So yeah, you want to talk about revenge. Yeah, you got a little bit of revenge here. And, and Colorado just stomped. I mean, I know Oregon State stinks, but they just stomped them. And USC they, does stink, though. I know. I, mean, I, I think USC think, is very similar to Oregon. Yeah, I, I, I no, think I agree, agreed. You know what I mean? And they went into Oregon and won. So, so just, yeah, and I don't think USC has a, as as good of an offense as Oregon does either. Right. You just don't feel right, you know, with it. But I, I agree with you. You know, USC does stink, and, and Colorado, sh- I mean, they should definitely go in and, and have some success. But, I, oof. Just, I mean, if you look at this game, though, for Colorado, right, if they if they manage to beat USC, if they manage to win, and I, look, I know the line's plus five and a half. They beat them. They're at Stanford ne- next week, which is obviously an extremely tough matchup. And then after that, it's home UCLA at a bad Arizona team, home Wash State, home Utah. You know, Colorado, I mean, at 21, they're angling for a big bowl game, you know, for the first time in over a decade. And, man, God, if they could do that going through USC, you know they're super motivated. Oh, big time. Big time. I'm going to go over to the Big Ten, guys. We got Michigan going into Rutgers. <laughs> Definitely a beatdown. I am so but sick of Michigan's schedule. I, I know, well, now they dream. They're finally on the road. I'm After fine. five in consecutive games in the big house, they are on the road now. But what better way to start your road season by going into the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers? You know, Rutgers only averaging 21 points a game. Michigan's minus 31 points in this particular affair. Uh, Rutgers is 3-8 and eight against the spread in the last 11 games. And, you know, Michigan's only allowing 12 points a game. Now, here's the challenge I have with Michigan. Love, and a half points. Love the well, – yeah, that's number one. Who'd hard Lo- pay for this schedule? Lo- yeah, right. right. <laughs> well, you know what? Hey, listen, he's got all the tune-ups he needs before they go into <laughs> the Ohio State University in a couple weeks. But Yeah, literally, it's all a tune-up until then. Yeah, it's all a tune-up until then. But anyway, this team defensively is awesome. I mean, I mean, you, you look at them here. I mean, they're, they're giving up about roughly 250 yards a game, 12 points a game. But – the offense, I just can't get it to work. I, I, I've been watching it. Their kicking game stinks. They missed three field goals last week versus Wisconsin. This team, just watching them offensively, is just it, it's troublesome to me. It's almost as bad as Alabama. You know what I mean? It's like it's it, worse. Well, it's 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 sim. It's a similar situation. I really they have did. a new kicker this week. Uh, I hope so. They got to get somebody out of the stands or something because I mean that that kid missed three. They could have lost that game to Wisconsin. That would have been a travesty if they did. Um, they should have covered the spread and won, but sure enough, they only won by a touchdown. You know, looking at this game here, they should be able to contain Rutgers. I just don't know if Michigan is going to be able to cover that thirty-one. That thirty-one's a lot of points, but I can't take Rutgers either. Dream, any thoughts on uh, your boy Harbizzle? Yeah, I don't like it. I don't, I don't, I, you know, the 30 points obviously way too much. You know me, I'm not getting involved in that. And I don't like the game. I agree with you. I don't like their offense, which I've, I've talked about a little bit this season. I can't wait for them to play Ohio State. Ohio State's going to kill Michigan. You so. <laughs> think so, huh? It's going to kill them. And that's a huge rivalry. And trust me, and Urban Meyer is going to step all over Harbaugh's neck with that team because this team, like you said, offensively is a mess. They can't get it done. They do play some defense, but we know if you're out in that field for an elongated time, you yeah. are going to give up some points and some things are going to happen to you. So uh, I hate this game. I, I mean, I think they beat Rutgers, but I'd never give 30. Dan, you going to give 31? 
No, sir. No, sir. All right. No, sir. And, um, and, you know, they did try out three. All three of their kickers had a competition this week. It's <laughs> leaning towards the freshman who actually didn't miss a kick because he didn't take one last week. All right. Speaking of freshman dream, my kid got in nine nine plays last night. Oh, nice. Yeah, under the blue, big lights in Lyman Hall, man. So big ups to them. And they rolled 44-16 to 16 final score. Uh, looking at the next one here, uh, I'm going to just stay with the Big Ten. And we are going to talk about the Ohio State University playing this Indiana team. Ohio State minus 28 and a half with an under over of 60. Ohio State's been a covering machine, Dream. Covering machine. If you want to lay some points and get involved in the murder show, <laughs> you might want to look right no further than here as CSI and the crime people have been notified to show up out at Ohio State today. I like Ohio State in this game. Obviously, great the offense. I think they're very underrated. You haven't been talking a lot about them. No. We have because we've been worried about the Clemsons, the Louisvilles, and all those other teams. In the meanwhile, they've been going about business as usual, very quietly, but very, uh, very impressively beating down the people that they've played. I know they haven't played much of a schedule, but you have to beat who you play and beat down who you play, which they've definitely done. So I like that momentum to continue here. Wouldn't be surprised if the LeBron James was at the game again. Yeah. Since he seems to be doing his uh, – Ohio showing up everywhere and having fun because he got the Cleveland game last night. Uh, this might be a good game for Ohio State to really flex their muscles and beat Indiana. I mean, I don't know what you say bad about Ohio State. They're getting it done on offense. Defense has only allowed 97 rushing yards as well, which is impressive. 140 uh, yards have been allowed through the air by their defense, so their defense is playing solid too. You know about JT Barrett. We watched him a little bit last year. Seeing him at the helm this year, it looks even better. You know, 888 yards, 14 touchdowns. You know, they got the full package this team does. I really like what they're doing. I think they beat Indiana. Of course, I would not give the 28. I think if you get this down to 20, you're great. All right. I'm looking at it here. Indiana has actually been getting a lot of points in this in this rivalry here. In the last five years, Indiana has covered every single time. Ohio State can't cover the spread versus this Indiana team. And even last year when they went into Indiana, I remember they only won by one touchdown. It was an ugly game. Mm. Dan, any thoughts here? Yeah, you can't. I think Indiana covers this. I, I like Indiana plus the 28 points, actually. Um, I understand Ohio State's going to win this game, but again, you've seen time and time again, these games be close. Yeah. Um, and again, I just think that that's what you see. You know, if Indiana is also three and one. They're not. They're not. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying Michigan State's a great team by any stretch, but they're a pretty good team that got knocked off by Indiana. I expect them to lose, but not not by four touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So the other thing, though, I, when you look at this game, we just do need to talk about when you talk about Ohio State's rhythm this season and their energy and yeah. everything about them this season is so different from what we've seen. I think since Urban Meyer has been there, I mean, you just don't have all the, you know, in years past, this Ohio State team dealt with a lot of controversy. You know, the media was all over them. You know, who's going to be the starting quarterback? And, you know, they were supposed to be so, so dope and they're not living up to... They just don't have any of that anymore to None. deal with. They just can go out and play football. And I think you're seeing, you know, their dominance based on just not having to deal with all of that. And with, I mean, that's what we talk about when we talk about, you know, off the field, you know, distractions. Ohio State doesn't have to live with any of that right now. And they're just playing football out there, having fun, executing and doing what they do. And I think you're seeing that, which is the only reason why. Don't be surprised if Indiana does get blown out in this game because in years past, the games have been close. Ohio State's dealt with all that nonsense that they don't deal with. They're home comfortable, uh, and obviously there's something going on in Ohio. I don't know what, but something's going on in Ohio except for the Browns. It's not going on with them, but something's going on in Ohio, and Ohio teams seem to be responding to it. Until, until the Browns knock off Brady. To spoil his return. Please, <laughs> and please, if you're interested in taking the Cleveland Browns, please don't call your bookie. Call me. <laughs> I'm not the number later on the show. You can call me. I'm taking all Cleveland Brown backers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dream is going to hold the bets. I'm holding the bet. <laughs> for, with the 10 and a half points. All right. So, uh, Dan, you got anything else? Nah, man. I got seven plays and then a couple baseball plays. Uh, All right. Feeling feeling good with my card. All right. Dream, how about you? 
I think we pretty much covered everything um, that I'm looking at. This, 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 there's one game that keeps standing out to me. I want to hear Dan's thoughts. The Texas Tech-Kansas State. I know it's kind of garbage, oh. but I just don't think Kansas State has any business giving 10 points. <sighs> you know, I, I'm with you there okay. because you, you have a Texas Tech team that – I mean, they just beat down Kansas, and I know Kansas State's better than them, but, you know, that Louisiana Tech team, obviously, their offense is ridiculously good, and they were able to hang with them and beat them. They put up a 59 spot there. You know, I mean, the over in this game, I think, is a good play. Um, I'm not going to play it, but I I agree with you. I think that this game is is close, and Texas Tech, I think, has a chance to win it. Yeah. I'm near too. Okay, that might, that might be an upset, gang. I don't, you know, I don't do underdogs a lot, and I don't get into that. But I think that's a live dog there, and I know you guys like that situation. You know, as far as the dogs are concerned, I just, I, I don't, I watch Kansas State. I have not been impressed with Kansas State's offense at all this season, and I just think that you know Texas Tech has a real opportunity to, to, to not only cover, but like Dan says, went on the field. I definitely agree, and I, I actually think. You're going to see this line go up before kickoff. You, you might see a plus 11, something like that. So I'm going to hold off, but I'm, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, because right. I haven't seen I haven't seen Kansas State play any of these um, these tempo spread type of offenses. I mean, I could be wrong, but I mean, you know, Arkansas, you know what I mean? Looking at Stanford, you know, this Texas Tech team is fast. Yeah. And eventually, I mean, if they can hold them to three and outs and, and keep that defense on the field, then then you're probably going to see a, a long day for Texas Tech. But Texas Tech scores a lot of points, guys. And, Dream, I, I think I'm with you there. I think ten and a half is a lot. A lot, man, a lot. Uh, oh, yeah. Especially when they only average 31 points a game. So, you know, something to take a look you at. you got to be a special dog when the dog warden talks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to shoot over to the baseball diamond real quick and just run down what you got going on, Dan, because you are the evil genius of Major League Baseball. So Thank the you. floor is yours. What you got? Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm I'm adding. I had that open parlay from yesterday with the Cubs, yep. and I'm adding the Cubs to it. You're adding so, the Cubs to it. Uh, the Cubs today are uh, 185 on the money line. I don't think the run line or the over-under has been released yet. They're going to obviously wait to see what's going on with the wind. Yeah, because the San Francisco Giants are built for the playoffs. <laughs> they are. Only, only in a seven-game series with Madison Bumgarner. They're built the for the playoffs, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they are, I'm telling you. I mean, the Cubs are built for the playoffs. <laughs> but <laughs> The Cubs are built to lose in the playoffs, though. That's That's the um, here, here's the thing with that. I mean, Arietta has to be good. And I think, I do think that, I mean, look, the, the Giants' offense is so bad. So bad. I mean, yeah, they can pitch. But their bullpen also stinks, guys. Remember, this bullpen blew, what, 38 saves this year? They've been through this. They're on their third closer who's not even a closer. Um, you know, and there's going to come a game where they need that bullpen. They're not going to have it, and the Cubs are going to kill them. Okay. So I'm actually going to probably take the Cubs' run line as well today. But Big. my favorite play is the Washington Nationals. As a home team dog at 405. 405. I think Tanner Roark has a really good game today. I think that they put a hurting on Rich Hill. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Dream, what are you doing for baseball? Any no score first innings or anything? I'm not doing any no score first <laughs> innings, but I am going to go against the team that's built for the playoffs. Going against the San Francisco Giant because I think the Cubs are built to win the World Series this year. I kind of talked about them beginning of the season with my novice baseball eye, but they have remained to be a machine. I think they get it done today, and I happen to agree with Dan. I think I'm not doing the run line because I'm not, you know I don't do that, but I know I do think the Cubs are going to win by a few today. I do think they're going to flex the bats a little bit. I like the Cubs tonight. All right, sounds yeah. good, guys. So that's going to do it for us. We are getting ready for the big NFL slate tomorrow and obviously a full day of baseball and college football today. So, Dan, what do you got to do to close out of here? I'm going to give it to you, then the Dream, and then myself, and then we're going. Yeah, so like I said, if you were following that open parlay, put the Cubs with it. Um, I think it pays out like plus 130, something around there. Ryan, the Nationals at plus 107 today. And then for the football card, Michigan State minus 4.5, Pitt minus 6.5, UNC plus one and a half, Texas plus 13 and a half, 
Florida State plus two and a half. Good luck to you, Hatter. I think you're in for a surprise. A&M minus seven, Colorado plus five and a half. Best of luck, everybody. All right, guys. I uh, just got notice from my man Raymaker saying that Texas Tech QB may not play today. Matt Mahomes is, was questionable. It's questionable. I think he's going to play, though. I do think he's going to play, but he's right. Yeah, I, that's why you're waiting. You're waiting on that. Game. You're waiting on that. Okay. All right. So I'm looking at a couple of games. You guys already know that I am on Western Michigan to get it done. I'm also on the Houston Cougars to get it done. I think the Houston Cougars with that rush defense is going to contain Navy, and I think Navy's not going to have an answer at all. Even though Navy's a pretty good team, I think Houston is that much better. I don't think Houston is a playoff caliber team. I think they're more of a New Year six team, but I don't think they're going to have a problem with the Naval Academy today. Also, I am looking at the Miami Hurricanes, the U to get it done over Florida State. I think that they will show up. I think they will play defense, and I think they will run the table and get it done and possibly play an ACC championship versus Clemson. That's what I'm looking at. I'm going against the evil doctor there. So, Dan, I wish I could wish you the best of luck on that one, but I can't. <laughs> so that's it. Guys. It's all right. I'm confident. All right. <laughs> Dream, what do you got to do to close out of here? Hey, I want to thank everybody that's retweeted the show and got up and got down with us today. As you know, I'm not really a big fan of today's card. I'm probably going to get involved in some watching and making some adjustments. Halftime, I like to do like the team totals after I see what's going on in the first half. Uh, out real quick glance, I do think a 10-point teaser is probably going to be in. in you know, in, I'm going to get involved with that today in some respect. I do like Michigan State. I do like the Ohio State. Those two I definitely like. Probably maybe throw in some Alabama. Not sure. I am definitely getting involved with the Cubs though tonight. I do like the Cubs, which is going to be bizarre for me to get involved with baseball. But I do like the Cubs. Uh, mostly because I got in all those warnings. And you know me, I like to go against the grain. I want to thank everybody that's retweeted the show. We got B's Knees out there. Terrence Mack, OJ, FB's in the house. G Rose is in the house. My boy Urban, what's up? C Rodriguez Jr., Vegas girl, 92661. Rick Lopez is out there. SD Grind, J Cash, Deplorable Salesman is in the house. Jeff Ryan, Wayne Yarborough, Crook. JC, Cash Action, Bets, Marlon, LA, WizKid, and Woots, GG, just to name a few. We got Average Joe Punter out there in sunny Australia doing their thing. And Cash Action, Bets also in the house. Gang, I'm the dream. Always remember who you're with. And by the way, one more thing. If you want to take the Cleveland Browns tomorrow against <laughs> the Patriots, call into the number and I will take the bet for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but the problem is the problem is you don't pay your bets, Dream. Oh, stop. It. That's the problem because I, you know what, the, the Mets came and went, and I still didn't go to the it's, game. I, it's, any bet that's done between me and Hat has been overpaid. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of the wager was, but he's definitely gotten it paid in some capacity. <laughs> Our day at the beach was way more expensive and way more fun than going to the beach. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Hopefully, we make the most of each and every day because you cannot get this time back. Cleveland Browns are going to win outright tomorrow, Dream. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we love you to death. Go out there, go easy, rise and grind, make all your dreams a damn reality, and get that money. Let's go. Peace. Peace.